it dawned on me, I didn't answer the question I set out to answer at the beginning of, of the uh, clip here about why didn't I file a patent? Where's your patent? If it's your IP, where's your patent? Well, let's talk about patents. Um, I have two choices. And actually, if you look at the original documents, it says IP, right? When I shared the document with Nihal, it says IP, the whole process, you know, had on there. And that's, you know, um, probably one of the reasons why they built the minimal viable like they, you know, maybe, I don't know, or maybe probably because of simplicity, because found ups, there's a lot to found ups, as you'll see if you read my white paper. But IP in startups is... It's a bullshit game, right? And it's a bullshit game because ultimately whoever has the most money wins, right? Number one, okay? So hiring an IP attorney, if you're going to defend IP, you need a million dollars. I only need to have enough money. You know, I got to, I can file a provisional one, but that's scraping a lot of money together. An actual patent would cost $15,000, right? A provisional one would have done me any good. 2014, by the end of 2015, if I didn't file my full $15,000 patent, I would have lost it, plus all the IP would have been out there. So the last thing I want to do was to kind of put all of the IP for, you know, for someone to build it, um, which here's an example, what happened, they built it um, out there, um, unless you can file an actual patent, and an actual patent would have cost a lot of money because there was lots of claims to it. Um, 30% of patents are of things that have already been patented. I don't know if you know that. You know, there's some great videos out there you can learn about patents. So, doing a patent in our current system, patents are really geared for folks with money in order to play the litigation game and the IP threat game. Because a lot of times people will basically go and infringe on you and say, oh, you've got my patent. The only reason now that I put everything on the Open Startup Innovation Framework on ha Hackaday and put it up there, a lot of it has to do with IP and, you know, that, that this is stuff that I came up with in 2012. This is how it works. And a lot of people now are kind of building <coughs> um, ideas on the blockchain built around what, um, you know, what I, what, what I, showed in a soft prototype in uh you know back in 2012 which is fine because ultimately what we can do is use a lot of this code which is open source right for building found ups so in a way they're helping to speed up the development because there's probably aspects of it so the whole point of me not um you know filing an ip is number one money i didn't have it number two the reality of protecting it wasn't possible. And it was it was better and safer for me to keep it kind of um, available and share it to those um, that I would try to recruit on a one-to-one -one, like I did with uh, Michal Alisi. Um, and then ultimately, uh, you know, encourage folks to build. And there's other folks who can correlate, for example, I was really excited. I talked to my C our CTO, um, Mike, <coughs> who's been with me along this project all this time. Other folks who, you know, who knows, you know, the the the, the genius of Boyf. And it really isn't genius. It's just if you start asking yourself this, if you if you if you go down the rabbit hole. What is, is the startup broken and how would I fix it if it is? You'd come up with OIF. And when you come up with OIF, right, you then can ultimately say, how would I engineer this on the blockchain? And you come up with Ethereum. It's really that simple. That simple. I'm up. It's a beautiful morning. The sun hasn't come up yet. I can see the light behind me over at the mountains. I love this time of the day because I'm the only guy walking around and I'm just surrounded by rice paddies and uh, the stars are still out. And I can uh, really just sit back and think and hear someone here. 
Pai Zaimas <laughs> out walking too. <laughs> Not making a video though. Probably wondering who the heck is this guy <laughs> walking around here. So, what I'd like I talked about today actually is Vitalik. The the genius of Vitalik and what he did. So, if anyone who know me knows me knows that uh, basically, um, I have a claim. I have a claim that you know Vitalik stole my idea. I don't want to talk about that. What I mean by that. And um, and he used my idea to um, engineer Ethereum. So, what I'm not claiming is this. Let's be very clear. I'm not claiming that I came up with the idea of the blockchain, right? Because that's what confused a lot of people. Oh, show us, you know, you invented the blockchain. You know, you invented the idea of, of doing what you're doing on the blockchain. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is I had put together the entire, actually even more complicated. If you look at the white paper, The Selfish Startup, um, the selfish startup.com is an ex, uh, extrapolation of what I came up with in 2012. All the pieces were together. Now, understand, I didn't use the name of the blockchain, um, I didn't use those terms because I, I was unfamiliar with those terms. I created the diagram of what I call the founders blockchain, but I didn't call it that. That was just the framework oif, of moving an idea from the point of aha, this is what I want to do to launching it as an IPO, right? I kind of figured out these are the steps that this idea would go through, right? These are the iterations. And ultimately, um, what I was trying to build in a framework of what you would understand would have been MS Encarta. And what happened was, by the time I got to 2012, this is 2011, OIF was pretty much complete. I even have a video, um, you know, kind of talking about that. Like, ah, I got it all, the last bit of the paradigm I sussed out. Um, and, um, I went in search of coders and because I wasn't having any luck in on the centralized framework of Silicon Valley and other folks, I decided to go in search of um, um, my developers for OIF in on the, on, uh, on Bitcoin. I was like, what are these guys up to? Maybe they'll get it. Maybe I can share with them. So, what did I have? I didn't have a white paper, okay? What I had was a soft proto, and let's talk about what a soft proto is. A soft proto was building the first theoretical app on a, on a platform, all right? On and the platform would have been Ethereum, okay? Or OIF, if it was built, you know, as, as I would have built it, like in Carta, they built Wikipedia. I mean, um, and I showed how all the pieces work together. So all you needed to do as a very talented, skillful engineer, which Vitalik is, is number one is, what is, you know, let's take all of this stuff off. Let's erase the board. And what is the, what is the underlining things, components that OIF is, right? The Open Innovation Framework. What are the very basics of OIF? And how do we build this stuff, the minimal viable product, that's called an MVP, that's what Ethereum is, an MVP of OIF. And how do we build this minimal viable product using the blockchain? Now, it took him from the time that I shared it with his best mate and mentor, Mihal Alisi, who created Bitcoin Magazine, had Vitalik um, as part of his, 
his team. And um, Miha completely grasped and understood Oif. Just like today, I, you know, just that I, I, I shared it with someone else. And they're like, I get it. I get it. I see it. I get it. And he even wrote, wow, what you have done um, completes what we're working on. And understand, um, Ethereum, this didn't pop out of nowhere, it, as everyone talks about. It. Oh, Ethereum just happened. No. Prior to that, um, in 2011, um, kind of like how MadeSafe has been around for quite a while, right? A group was working and developing something called Small Planet. And Mihai Alisi was the lead on that product project. He was the lead. And there was also a Russian guy. Um, um, I'd like to track him down too. And um, between the Russian guy... Um, and Mihail, and then finally, um, Vitalik, we're all on this project called the small, you know, small planet, small dot net, right? Small P small P L A dot N E T was the name of their website. Really clever. So what happened was, and I can show this to you, I can show you the, um, for those who are interested in writing a story, for those that are interested in actually getting to the bottom of this, is Mike Trout just this crazy guy in Japan? Or did, in fact, did he sh share something what he called a soft prototype? And a soft prototype is this. A soft prototype basically is what a non-developer builds and found up to demonstrate and show his application working. And there was an amazing product out there called Slide Rocket. And Slide Rocket was uh, acquired by a third party and sold to their competitor, Clearwalk, Clear, uh, Clear Slide, uh, to get them away from the competition. Because all the talk was, which is better, Clear Slide or Slide Rocket. And um, it was, and they were removed um, in early 2013. And um, the access to Slide Rocket basically ceased. However, all my files and my soft prototype, which is, exists there in kind of cold storage before um, Vitalik wrote his amazing white paper on the theory of, you know, of um, Ethereum, um, built on my IP, my intellectual property or my ideas. I don't have IP and I'll talk about that. Why don't, why didn't I patent it? Why did I do that? Um, and ultimately, uh, you know, it's there for anyone to see. And I can show you here's here's the DAO. Here's currencies. You know, here's the first token. Um, you know, um, even though in public I never talked about tokens, actually tokens and changing currencies was a fundamental part of OIF. And I shared that with Miha. It's like you'll be able to basically make any any um, currency, any token. And that's basically been a very, very important Ethereum. Um, and uh, part of their, you know, their framework was the whole idea of multiple tokens. Um, and all the different things, for example, one of the biggest claims that, uh, that Stephen Tullis talks about is like, oh, likes and follows and everything is a new business model. Um, and it will actually uh, be tied to you know, to uh, Ethereum. Well, <laughs> that's one of the core things I call passive crowdfunding uh, that you can see in the doc and that I, that I talked about. So all of the elements, there's, there really isn't any element except for the structure, the fundamental structure of Ethereum, the way it works on the blockchain that I hadn't pulled together in OIF, in the Open Innovation Framework. Now, OIF is a lot more complicated and OIF is, is about, um, you know, how it all works and how it all fits together to, to create basically a new business model framework, right, um, for launching decentralized innovation. So, and that's where we're at now. And, you know, and, and ultimately, you know, my desire now is to build it. And to build it not on Ethereum, but on Ethereum Classic, because 
it's kind of like karma. I look at, for me, the whole thing with the fork and the establishment of Ethereum Classic is karma coming back to me. It's like, you know what? It's the universe saying, hey, Michael Trout, let's just, let's give you your own Ethereum, right? You deserve to have your own Ethereum sandbox to play in. And here it is, we're gonna call it Ethereum Classic. That's, that's what we're gonna call it. And ultimately, you will be able to, you know, launch your ideas and you can now say, hey, you guys keep Ethereum. I want Ethereum Classic. I think it's fair. Um, you know, uh, you use my ideas to build this damn thing. I think, you know, I should be able to, you know, use your idea to build my thing. It's, uh, it's kind of payback <laughs> or it's, what is that called? It's, uh, there's a, there's a phrase for it. Um, Pid quo pro, quid pro quo, prid quo pro, right? It's, it's, you did it to me, I'm gonna turn around and do it for an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. So, um, and that is why all of a sudden I've come out. And, and if you look at any of my history, for example, you know, like why are you making your claim now? Well, I'm making, I'm reasserting, I'm not making my claim now, I'm reasserting my claim. Actually, I made the claim as soon as I discovered um, LinkedIn, uh, on LinkedIn, um, you can read my articles. As soon as I discovered um, Ethereum, um, I reached out to me, uh, Mihail. I said, what the fuck, dude? You know, help me launch Foundups. And he, you know, um, they all just circled their wagons and everything. I also wrote articles on it. Um, they blocked me. They removed Mihail from the, from the board. Um, early on to protect the organization because they didn't know who I was or you know what money I had or you know because on LinkedIn I have myself as a VC because there really isn't any category for an entrepreneur they don't have entrepreneur they don't have innovator as a category that's what I see myself as that's what I, I'm an innovator entrepreneur and uh, ultimately uh, um, we uh, you know I'm uh, stepping up in the uh, and position myself as the rightful heir <laughs> to the ETC blockchain. So my desire for the ETC blockchain is really not to change the immunity, immunity fact, factor of it. My desire is kind of what, for example, Avatar's desire is to pivot away from ETC and make it its own, or it, it pivot away from Ethereum and make it its own thing. So it doesn't become um, classic, but ultimate becomes core. And more importantly, invest the millions of dollars, potentially, right, to build the algorithm that's gonna run it all. That's gonna run the whole blockchain in a, you know, without the special interests of, um, you know, of uh, Ethereum, the banking and FinTech and all of that other stuff. So, and you've got to consider yourself, you have to ask these questions, right? Number one is how did a kid who was basically, when he, he was 17 years old, right? Have the life experiences, talking about Vitalik, to pull together all the pieces, right? I spent three years from 2009 to 2000 and late 2000 and, you know, or, or uh, 2011, kind of figuring out, meditating out here in, in rural Japan every day, thinking and talking. I've got lots of talks on, on found ups. I've got literally hundreds of talks on found ups that you can look at my playlists and everything else and you can see the evolution of the idea in my talks. You see the talks I talk about what I call Open corporations, open corporations are just DAOs or DACs, right? Um, in many respects, um, the way they're set up. And you say, well, you know, they're built on a centralized model, but ultimately they're tied into something called the stakeholders. The stakeholder was my my term. And it's funny, they use the term as stakeholders in, in Ethereum. But stakeholder is the person on the blockchain. Um, all connected within you know one entity. Um, 
or, all, or on the platform, right? All connected to it within the platform. So the blockchain is a platform. Ethereum is that platform. So OIF and that platform, stakeholders connected into the OIF platform, which in their iteration was... Um, oh, um, the blockchain, right? And ours is, it's, it's, it's the stakeholders. So, and the reality is, is that no, <laughs> the kid was genius, but he didn't have the life experiences to pull all this together in, you know, in, uh, you know, in, in a systematic approach. Whereas, you know, I spent a lifetime doing startups and, I'm sitting here thinking, how does it all fit together? And what is the underlying structure for it all? And not only that, because I'm dyslexic and I can't write, I actually build the damn thing to show you how something would work, a platform would work, you know, this, how this would actually work on Ethereum, on the blockchain. So, yeah. So that's the things to consider. For you, if, if you're thinking, uh, who is this guy, Mike Trout, and, and what is this, you know, this claim that he helped, or he is the mind behind the fundamental structure of Ethereum. And that's what OIF is. OIF, Ethereum is the minimal viable product of OIF, stripping away all the stuff to the bare bones on how you would make OIF work that was needed, that I needed to build in order to launch Foundups. I'm still... The poor guy in Japan who spends all his time um, trying to share this knowledge, this reality with folks, um, raising the funds to launch uh, found ups. Um, and to that end, my next step here is how do we drive people? to Ethereum Classic, how do we make Ethereum Classic the blockchain for the people, by the people? And how do we do that is something that I guess I'm talented at, is by launching a global event around it. And that global event is UN. UN. The UN DevCon. The UN DEFCON. The UN whatever it is out there, we need to un it if it's about the blockchain, the un fintechs. Un meaning we are the antithesis to the, you know, to the greed. We're the antithesis to the harm. We're the antithesis. We want to unimagine the world the way that it is right now, and we want to um, create an unimaginable, unbelievable world on the blockchain. We want to ensure that the blockchain is not stolen by special interests. We want to ensure that the blockchain is open and free to all to use. And we want to ensure that found ups happens and changes everything. And I have many talks on how found ups will change everything. In the simplest form, what FoundUps does is it it changes the fuel that fuels something that Noam Chomsky talks about as um, the vicious cycle, which is how inequality, it's the engine that drives inequality, and that engine that drives inequality is the startup business model, which I've been saying for many, 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 many years now is endemically flawed. Not because it was des it was designed that way. It was just inherently built that way, and it was inherently built that way because when it was put together and conceived, they wanted to, in a way, drive investors to f to help fuel the industrial revolution and to fuel growth and everything else. And they came up with something called compounded annual growth rate (CAGR) which is infinite growth on a finite planet. And they never conceived the idea of that we would have limits to growth. And we have now entered into that paradigm, that reality. We're finally realizing that, even though we did knew it in the 1970s, 
because of this MIT book called The Limits to Growth that warned us, but no one listened. Because greed is a very powerful thing. Greed is something that uh, is like, oh, you know, like having an eating disorder. And <laughs> ah. <laughs> I always sneeze in threes. Should be another one. <laughs> there it is. Ah, out of my system. Maybe fours. Um, and greed is something that is uh, driving this vicious cycle. I hope you enjoyed this talk. It's kind of long. <laughs> oh. All right. My name is Mike Trout. Just talking about some things for you to remember to, to understand when I talk about my claim on Ethereum. What I'm talking about is I'm the guy who actually put the parts together shared it with an engineer who ultimately took a year to figure out and wrote a white paper on how to build it on the blockchain. That's it.